Hi everyone, welcome to Vedantu Neat English. I am Diksha Kaushal, your chemistry master teacher. So guys, today we are going to discuss about how to increase your marks from 0 to 180. How to, in chemistry, how to do this? Is this possible in 4 months or not? So guys, this is possible but only if you apply a proper strategy to this, okay? So now we are going to discuss about what is the proper strategy for increasing your marks. So guys, uh, in a very crisp manner, I am going to discuss this. First thing that I need a promise for you that is leave your comfort zone if you are uh, if you want that you just want to study for four five hours a day and you don't want to complete your syllabus you just want to do some important topics then you are not going to have 180 out of 180 in chemistry that is not possible you have to cover each and every single topic that is mentioned in your syllabus only then 180 out of 180 is possible if you complete every single topic in detail with previous care questions, NCRT, everything. So now in four months, how to do this? Let us discuss. But first thing that is leave your comfort zone. And second is consistency. Daily, daily with discipline, you have to study daily. Religiously, you have to do your subject study, self-study. Okay. So now. Let us discuss what is the strategy for this. So guys, first thing is your teacher, right? So what do you mean by this ma'am? Any teacher, any teacher that you like, uh, you have to firstly, if you want to complete your syllabus in this very little span of time, then you need the guidance of your mentor. You need the guidance of your teacher. So firstly, you need to uh, understand which teacher you like and uh, how they teach. How they teach means uh, the teacher should teach totally on NCRT basis, right? So as you all know, for NEET, NCRT is like God for you, right? So if a teacher is teaching on the basis of NCRT, then you should, you must, you must uh, go through the lectures of that teacher first. Only after, for example, I am picking up one chapter, let it be, uh, let it be a structure of atom. Okay. So now, firstly, what you need to do, firstly, go and watch the lectures of that teacher, offline or online, whatsoever. After that, after that, just go through your NCRT. Just go through your NCRT because once you have studied from a teacher, after that NCRT reading will be very easy for you. Right? So mostly, mostly teacher must have covered the NCRT section in their lecture only. So these two things will be covered in the lecture itself. After that, some of the teachers provide you self notes, uh, like uh, notes made by them. And some of the teacher don't provide you. It totally depends on teacher to teacher. So if you already have teacher's notes in your hand, then either you can make your own notes out of it. If you feel that because only four months are left, what you can do? Just uh, follow those teacher's notes and additionally, additionally add on your pointers to that notes. Okay, uh, you can print out those notes and after that you can additionally point out what you want to write in those notes. Additionally, that should be your individualized notes. Okay, after that, after that, now these three things will be covered. Right. Uh, if you if you're if you're learning from me, these three things will be covered. Teacher notes based on NCRT and I'll provide you with PDFs. After that, you just need to print out those notes. And after that, just uh, individualize your notes on the basis which topic you find difficult and which topic you find easy, where you stuck. Just mark that as red. OK, that's how you will uh, save your a lot of time. After that, completing these three things in the lecture itself. You will have to do PYQs, PYQs and NCRT questions, NCRT in text question. Everything is very, very important. You don't need to jump to NRVST and MS Johan if you're not, if you have not done NCRT in text question, exercise questions and PYQs. First thing is PYQs, NCRT in text question, NCRT uh, exercise. Only then after that you have to jump to any reference book. Okay, so I'll guide you. I'll, uh, I'll actually advise you. Firstly, do PYQs and NCRT, then only jump to any reference book. After that, after doing those PYQs, there may be some previous year question that you will find difficult, but your friend will not find difficult. So according to your <coughs> weakness, you, what you have to do in your notes that you have just printed it out in your notes, mark those topic as something that you don't that you uh, that uh, that you find difficult. OK, so you just need to mark those topics after that. Edit your notes. Edit your notes means if you find anything difficult, how to make it easy. 
right so edit your notes and point it there that this is the topic that i find difficult i have to revise this topic again and again right this is the topic that you find difficult in pyqs and this is also very very important so you need to revise this again and again so now your notes are not your teacher's notes they are actually your teacher's note that you are individualizing yourself according to what you find difficult right so this is also saving your time plus you have your own self notes right so next thing is revision after after this pyq session and ncrt ncrt text question what you need to do you will have those notes you just need to revise those okay revise this two three times and after that directly give some mock test or some test based on that chapter or give a full fledged mock test of 3 hours right this happens every sunday either you give uh, you firstly take revision and after that give mock test of that particular chapter or full fledged syllabus after that again i am saying to edit the notes why i am saying that because after that what will happen while you are giving the mock test you will also find some questions that you have revised so many times but you still find those topics very difficult right so you need to edit that notes again and again there may be some question that were not mentioned in your ncrt or your teachers note there may be some questions that are uh, asked in mock test but you have never heard about those topics okay just mention those those there there will be very rare questions like that but if you encounter such question just write it down in your notes okay in those self notes and now you will have your proper self made notes that you just need to revise before your exams that's it now you know which is your weakness which topic you need to focus on if you follow this whole chart i am i am telling you if you follow for one chapter this whole chart for one chapter after that this chapter will be on your tips and i am promising you that if you follow this religiously things will be done right okay so after that again what i am saying after editing your notes once you have that proper self notes after that again doing pyqs just one time is not enough okay that is not enough you need to revise your pyqs again now you will find that uh, before if you uh, answered uh, 30 out of 50 question correctly now you will surely answer 49 question out of 50 correctly if you have done this properly and third time you will get full marks and this will increase the probability of having 180 out of 180 in chemistry and this can be applied to any other subject so now let us jump to chemistry in detail chemistry is basically three subjects right that is physical chemistry inorganic and organic chemistry as i always tell you these three have different approaches you can't just apply one approach to all these three sub topics of chemistry no that is not true okay so if i talk about physical chemistry physical chemistry as the name says physics right physics uh, physics is all about calculations and formulas and some conceptual knowledge also you need to know how to apply that formula you uh, you will be get puzzled in that statement in that numerical because that numerical will be asked in a very twisted manner so for that what you need to do in physical chemistry firstly you need to know the conceptual knowledge what is the concept behind that after that you need to have a formula sheets of all the formulas in that chapter and next is how to apply that formula right you will have to solve so many questions so many tricky questions for that so now ma'am from where should we solve the questions so what students should they directly jump to in our sthi they don't do ncrt questions before that so firstly uh we have very less time right now so firstly you need to know you need to uh, practice ncrt questions there are amazing questions of physical chemistry so firstly you need to uh, practice ncrt questions ncrt in text question in this after that you will practice pyqs you will uh, answer the, you you need to know what is the correct answer to that after calculation you just need to know what is the formula apply that formula calculate it usually students stuck in especially neat students they don't know how to do calculations so student get stuck in calculation it's all about practice so you need to practice this ncrt questions and pyqs after that if you still have time then jump to university only otherwise pyqs and ncrt questions are enough for you okay next next is inorganic so what about inorganic do we need any any reference book here it's all about if i tell you inorganic is not about cramming i am lying to you okay I, trust me i am lying to you at that time okay so inorganic is about cramming but 
how do we cram things we just rectify things no that is not true okay so how do we cram things firstly we understand the logic behind this even if there are exceptions exceptions are there for some reason what is the reason behind that there are logics in inorganic chemistry first you need to understand that understand those logics and then it will be very easy for you to remember those exceptional trends and everything the bondings everything will be very easy for you if you know the logics behind that and how to do it firstly go to teacher notes and after that read ncrt not once not twice at least four to five times before your exam you need to know every single line of ncrt inorganic ncrt is very 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 important must must do if you are doing ncrt religiously you are done with it okay just uh, do ncrt and solve few questions related to ncrt that's it and you will be done at least four five times you have to do ncrt next is organic chemistry for organic chemistry very very simple organic chemistry all the topics are interrelated to each other you can't just pick one topic and say okay i'll have mastery over uh, aldehyde and ketones and after that i'll skip alcohol phenol and amines i'll skip all those chapters because aldehyde ketone is very important i'll do that only i'll skip goc that is not possible in case of organic chemistry in physical chemistry you can skip few topics and still have mastery over other topics in inorganic chemistry that are little bit interrelated but still you can skip few topics and have mastery over other topics but in organic chemistry that is not possible you have to do you have to know every single thing about goc and basics of organic chemistry and then all the reaction what you will see in exams there are so many conver conversions asked in exams so they don't they don't uh, ask those conversions from just one chapter they combine two three chapters in that so you have to do full fledged organic chemistry for that so guys for this firstly complete your goc and after that after that complete your syllabus all the reaction naming reactions are very very important uh, the iupc names what are the common names of some of the few compounds and after that how do we practice this ncrt have uh, ncrt have very uh, amazing conversion that are asked in ncrt exercises firstly do that after that pyqs you will get an idea okay pyqs usually those questions are asked repeatedly and repeatedly and repeatedly you will get an idea what kind of questions are asked and naming reactions like they are asked every time naming reactions they are top notch important if i tell you what is a, a priority order of importance in organic chemistry naming reactions naming reactions naming reactions okay so naming reactions do naming reactions and also in naming reactions you need to know few mechanisms that are asked okay you know, you don't need to remember all the mechanisms asked in the reactions you just need to know few mechanisms that i'll teach you definitely okay so after that practice and practice practice and practice in physical chemistry practice of numericals in this practice of general questions reactions conversions and in inorganic chemistry ncrt repeatedly four to five times that is must so i thought i think uh, now you have an idea you have an idea about uh, what kind of uh, approach you should have for 180 out of 180 in chemistry so guys see you all uh, in the class where I'm going to start GOC firstly from inductive effect then resonating effect and so on and those students who are committed they will watch all those lectures if you are, if you are missing even one lecture now you will skip it okay if you're missing even one even thing even one single lecture is going to you know if you miss one single le lecture that is going to you know harm your studies a lot in organic chemistry so I'm telling you if you if you will be committed to these sessions then you will you will definitely crack 180 out of 180 in chemistry i am telling you that you just need to be consistent so now all the students who are definitely committed to uh, having committed for having 180 out of 180 in chemistry just write down we will and ma'am we will crack 180 out of 180 in chemistry just write down in the comment section and I'll surely see your comments. I do see your comments and I reply to your comments. Okay, bye-bye. Take care.